and Chirag Shetty, the third seeds from India. This is their path to the finals. Lots of uh, different uh, countries involved. Nice and diverse, this one. And uh, perhaps didn't go with the uh, form, some might say, because the, uh, well, not form necessary, but the defending champions were out in the semis. And uh, Chinese second seeds didn't make it through as well. In the uh, race to the finals at the end of this year, we see three Indonesians pairs in there. That's how strong they are in this. And uh, of course, only two can play in those finals. So one of them will have to miss out. But still, we're just around the halfway point of the 2022 three calendar. So again, no real horse to back necessarily for this Korean crowd. Be interesting to see who they get under, but there are plenty of Indonesians in there, as there are around the world. And that is a real credit to them. This is the national sport of the country after all. So these two pairs have met four times. It's two apiece. The last one they met was in Indonesia, which Ranky Reddy and Shetty perhaps surprisingly won that and quite comfortably as well. That was in uh, June. So just you last will month. You will receive Alkian Su, which side? And nice to see as well some India supporters too. So we've got a bit of both. This makes it more interesting when that happens. Let's start with the Indonesians then. Get to know them a little bit better. Mohamed Rian Adianto is 27 years of age, 172 centimeters tall. And uh, these two have been world champions bronze medalists twice in 2019 and 2022 last year. They're also Asian Games silver medalists, which they get to defend later this year. Fajr Alfia is 175, a little bit taller from uh, Bando. These two much shorter than the Indian opponents. They were Asian champions and part of the men's team event in 2020. Got a bronze in the SEA Games in 2017. And uh, these are their results so far. They dropped a game against Kang Min Hyuk and Seo Suk Jae. It was quite the uh, semi-final, that one. That was a repeat of last year's final, which they lost out on. So they've already done one better in that sense. They've got 10 titles to their name, including two this year, the Malaysia Open and the All England. They've won every final they've been in, in 2023. Sutmik Saras Ranki Reddy is 22. He's 184, just over six foot from the south of India, Amalapuram. And uh, both him and his partner, the current Commonwealth Games champions. They also have a bronze medal from last year's World Championships, finished third there, and are the current Asian champions as well. Chirag Shetty is the tallest player here, 187. He's uh, 26 years of age from the commercial capital, Mumbai. Chirag Shetty, they've won six titles together. And they've also won both the finals that they've been in, the Swiss and the Indonesia Open. They haven't dropped a game yet. Very good yesterday against Lang Wei Kung and Wang Chung. And actually, you look at that result against Hoki and Kobayashi. Two very good wins against seeded Ready seeds. They haven't really had to play too long as well, either. So they've been nice and fresh here, unlike perhaps their opponents. Aris Metzpalu is the umpire for this one, the Estonian. And 
the English service judge is Dominic Godera. So the Indians, their record here in Korea, they've never got past the quarterfinals in three attempts. So this is already very, very good for Alfian and Ardianto. They've won this back in 2019. They got to the finals last year, as I mentioned, losing to Kang Ming Hyuk and Seo Sung Jae. So can they go one better? Looking at their record in finals, the Indians have been to Eight finals and won six out of eight. That's a very good record. They've won their last four in a row. The last final they lost was the French Open back in Ladies 2019. On my right, so it's been excellent for them Tyler in that Tyler sense. And Shirakshari, India. And on my left, Fajar Akhyan and Muhammad Riyan Arianto, Indonesia. The uh, Indonesians have played in 19 finals, they've won 11 out of 8 and have won their last three. The last final they lost was at Singapore Open last year. So both in good form in finals, generally. This is set up to be a tasty one. the first points for the Indonesians. Right. No. We've uh, only once before played an Indian pair in the final, and it's this Indian pair. They beat them at the Side Modi International in 2018. One of the four times that they have met. A lot has changed since then. Especially for the Indian pair. But overall, the Indonesians playing Indian players have got a very, very good record. Ten wins out of 12 against Indian pairings. The only two they've ever lost are against this pair. Clearly, hear the Indonesians in the crowd here. As for the Indian pair, as they draw level here, they have uh, met Indonesians four times in finals, won two and lost two. They won their last one at the India Open last year in the final, meeting the daddies, Mohamed Hassan and Hendria Setiawan. Overall, their record against Indonesians, though, is not quite as good. We've met Indian pairs 35 times and won 16 of them, so less than half. So they have won four of their last five meetings against Indonesians. Shetty. Two. Well, Indonesia and India. These are their only representatives in the finals here at the uh, Korea Open 
Bit of a wild swinger, that one, Runky Reddy. Five, two. Easy one for Shetty to put away. Three, Getting some instructions there from the great Pulela Gopichant, Indian badminton legend, who's her coach. Oh. Oh. Oh, just snatching that one, hitting it way too early. Already onto the lead is five. This is going to start getting tough for the Indians if they don't, they don't do something soon. by Fajar Alfia. Saw where the Indians were bunched up. needed those points, didn't they? Now, this is supposed to be the so-called easier end. Not proving to be the case right now. For the Indians. I get it. ah! It's an imposing seven-point lead already for the Indonesians in game one. Alfen and Ardianto, 11-4 up against Ranki Reddy and Shetty. Good start from Alfian and Ardianto.
Sí. Y la the gap. Indians really want to do it as soon as they can. Uh, around this, these early stages, still fairly early. Not leave it too late. After the, in the Indonesians get to around 15, 16 or so, it's very, very hard. So this is, this is good right now, as far as the Indians are concerned. Still trial by five, though. trailing as it is by this many points the last thing you want to do is give away cheap ones like that that's a real gimme isn't it for Alfa and Arianto it's uh, three all since the interval which is better for the Indians but the deficit is still too high So up to eight now. This is the biggest lead thus far. Well, that might well have slid out. And that's why the Indians are challenging. Oh, that's very clearly it. Now I'm seeing that again. Of course, uh, easy for us to say that when we've had the benefit of the, the replays. Uh, in real time, not easy to judge. Yeah, there you go. That's about the most in challenge, uh, challenge we've had. Very much uh, an Indonesian point, not even close. Yeah, that's just gone a little long, is not it? of losing their first game of this uh, tournament. What they are lacking at the moment is really a run of points. They've had a run of uh, two earlier on, just uh, once they've done that. They need it again. More than that, really, if they want to try and get something out of this. But it's proving very difficult right now.
Doesn't get that over. Behind Leanto, and that's uh, frustration for him. For the Indonesians to wrap up this first game. Just about good, and that's with the drift that we we're talking about earlier. Helping to keep that in. Thank you. Now, shouts of India from the few fans in here. Very, very much in that one, isn't it? they're finishing with a flourish which might give them some encouragement in the next game so they're putting on a bit of a run here four points in a row but it's uh, Thank you. not gonna be easy Well, this is good, really good from the Indians, five in a row, and now maybe just starting to pile a little bit of pressure on here. On the Indonesians, who are still fairly comfortable with a four-point cushion. If they go on to lose this first game, Rangareli and Shetty, and you would still say at this point they would be likely to, that they can take a lot from this first game and how they battle back six in a row. Which is now better than what the run that Alfred and Ardianto had earlier. They put a big, big bit of respectability on the scoreline now when they were trailing 10-19. This is excellent. But 
eventually. The odds were always against them. Now, four game points here for Alfen and Arianto. <laughs> That's finally got the Indonesian fans singing again. do it, Alpha and Arianto, they stumbled over the line a little when they were very, very comfortable. But it was mainly set up with that big, big cushion they had. They built up a, a massive lead fairly early on, 11-4 at the interval, remember. Uh, credit to Rankareni and Shetty for fighting back and showing some real courage, some real fight. Wasn't quite enough, but that scoreline looks a lot better, doesn't it, now? That's 17-21 when it could have easily been maybe even a 10-point deficit in the end. So 21-17 to Alfian and Arianto at the end of game one. Good start for Alfa and Arianto. A decent finish from Rankiredi and Shetty. It could have uh, been a lot quicker for Alfa and Arianto, a little bit more clinical. Let's see what happens in the second. And this is a so called easier round, so this is a, maybe a bonus for the Indonesians. Flicks uh, doing its uh, job. Good start. Thank you. sort of noise from the fans Indonesian fans anyway and getting into this
Yeah, that's the drift that we were talking about. It's behind the Indians right now. Nicely done by Shetty. Similar sort of start to what we had in the uh, previous game. And then Indonesian suddenly surging forward. That's what the uh, Indians will be wary of, I'm sure. Yeah, it was... Uh, it was 3-2 to the Indians, and then next thing you know... And three, so they really did surge. Yeah. And it's will be well aware of that. Flick serve. Oh, really nicely handled by Adianto. He got back well. A little slice of luck to help him along. Got right under it. And uh, yeah, that just danced on the uh, tape for a second, didn't it? And that gave them the point. Yeah, slightly different feel now, this second game. The Indians are responding well. It's been alternating the points right now. Uh, the idea was good, the placing was just a little off. Yeah. It looks like that's uh, three in a row now for the Indians here. Lovely from Shetty. But they can't take the point. Well, our friend Adianto. I've had a much tougher time getting to these uh, to this final. It's a tougher time, but certainly in that last match, they were pushed, weren't they, by Kang Min Gyuk and Seo Sung Jae. That was a very tight last Thank game, you. which uh, Alfa Nardianta won 21 18. To be fair, they their opening round match Five, against a Korean pair six. called Sung Hyun and Shin Baek Chiol.
it ended after two minutes when the Koreans had to retire. So they haven't played, have had to play that much. Indians have just uh, dropped their first game of this tournament. And the Indonesians have drawn level here. serve <laughs> nicely done by Rocky ready have the Indonesians in some disarray are not able to assert themselves yet. The Asians, I think, will be fairly happy with this so far, in the sense that they, they know that there's going to be a reaction from the Indians. They're only a point behind. Frustrating for the Indians and uh, maybe seeking some clarification. Got to do it within those two lines and whole shuffle has got to be below it. have not been able to take the lead apart from briefly uh, and at the start of the second game the Indian fans will be relatively happy with this well wide from Alpian and into the interval we go with Alpian and Arianta trailing here but they have taken the first game Still plenty to do for Ranki Reddy and Shetty.
are looking to narrow that lead certainly they're in a better position here than the Indians were in that first game when it was they were really struggling 11-5 and they never recovered it was too late by the time they had that recovery towards the end Indians are, the Indonesians are just not able to get a run at the moment. A good run. The lead is up to four now. So this is starting to look difficult for the Indonesians. They obviously don't want to risk this going to a third. Okay. They need to do uh, the same kind of comeback or attempted comeback anyway from the Indians mm -hmm. that uh, we saw in the first game. They put on six points in a row there, the Indians. He should have got that over. Yeah, it's always a little bit difficult as round the head. Just not able to repel the Indians. A lot more power, a lot more pace about them. They look reinvigorated. We've seen some decent recoveries in this. The final day. Uh, most notably, Anders Antonsen. I think he's the only one so far who's come back from losing the first game to go on a win. The lead is five now. Kind of similar to what we saw in the previous game. Now, is that the start of something here for the Indonesians? Doesn't last long. Very nicely for Rocky Reddy and Shetty. The lead now is six. <laughs> well, I don't know saying that this close run was the uh, the better end for players, but uh, not proving to be the case in this doubles match. Oh, 
Uh, Indians putting pay to all that. And well, this is looking very good for them. I mentioned earlier that they would have taken some real confidence from the, the momentum they gained at the start of the at the end of the first game. They've taken that to the second here. It is a, it's really quite amazing how wild the swing has been. And actually, if you look now, the aggregate number of points, far more for the Indians. And of course, there's really no significance at the end of it all, but they'll feel it. They're winning a lot more. They've got a lot of game points here. And it's swung quite wildly their way. The uh, Indonesians now, it's just token points. Again, they'll want to finish on a high here to take that momentum into the next game if they can. That run of five points is over for the Indians. They can't finish off here. No, they can't. 30, Remember, it was 10-16 uh, to... Often already onto in the previous game. Ranki Reddy Shetty fought hard and came back. And let's see how this one ends. Often already onto looking to get as many as they can. But they do eventually put that away. Second game goes to Ranki Reddy and Shetty. We will move to the third and final game here in the men's doubles final. Well, you'd think right now that momentum has shifted quite firmly in favor of the Indians. Not only did they win that last game quite comfortably, but just since the towards the end of that first game, they've been very good. Reminder again, the head to head between these two pairings is two all. They last met just uh, last month. 
where Alf and Arrieta were completely outplayed. Rangiri and Shetty won that quite comfortably. In fact, they've won their last two meetings, but the last one was in Thailand in 2019. This is the first time, by the way, in five meetings that it's gone to three. Three games. rallies. It would feel that uh, the theory I put out there just a short while ago is uh, at the moment ringing true. Lucky Red and Shetty looking good here. Shetty seemed to be caught in two miles with that shot. And I wonder whether just because Ronke Reddy was a little close to him. Yeah, maybe that was the case. for example, can often be very useful to the team that's been down. They just need a moment to wreck up, to uh, refresh, regather, regroup, and come back stronger. Ahead. This was about where they made their surge in the last game. Indians. And uh, it's looking quite good here, isn't it? where they want to sort of be in this range, two to three points. Yeah, 
just uh, alternating at the moment. Good aggression from the Indians off the serve here. The flick serve didn't quite have the effect that the uh, Indonesians wanted. You can just hear them now, upping the volume, trying to play their part, which is good. Yeah, by now, if you recall, both intervals had uh, fairly big score lines, fairly big deficits. At the moment, it doesn't look like it's going to be that way. So we go into the interval here with the Indians 11-8 up in game three. This is much tighter than it's been in the previous two games. And as we've seen previously. Leaves us nicely poised, waiting to see what happens in the second half of the final game. Of the last match here, final stake, reopen 2023. Again, it's uh, following that pattern that we've seen. And a point here and a point there, but it's tight, so much tighter. Oh, 
it just looks at his rocket there, Rocky Reddy. That's a shot. I think you'll feel that he at least should have got over the net because he made it. Plenty of time. Just didn't get the right kind of contact. Here we go. All right, next one. No, here we go. Another one. There we go. Just hit it a little too high up the racket. I'll be happy with that one, Shetty. Now, the Indians in uh, game three, actually, both sets have had little runs of three and two points. Indians with three, because they've been their best so far. Putting there, did he perhaps? Hardy on top. I need to really wipe that one down. Thank you. Three points that lead could be quite crucial. Completely. And again, one that he probably ought to have put in. Now they're in real trouble. Ranky Reddy and Shetty in pole position will feel quietly confident. What can they do?
Oh, they're cruising right now. Just looking at this run, it is coming at the right time here for the Indian pair. And now they can put the finishing touches on this. Oh, that is a glorious shot, and one that is much needed by the Indonesians. Have a look at this. How oh, we made that just effortless. Well, Praja Alfia. Still a five point lead. Another great shot, but Ronky Reddy gets there. And the Indians are not far away now. Seven championship points now for the Indian pair. Who have never played at the career open before and got this far. Only a couple of quarter final appearances in 2017 and last year. They're on the cusp of eating last year's finalists. Outside of the two titles they've won, they've not got past the second round at any other tournament apart from the Malaysia Open where they reach the semi-finals, but they've done it here. Delight for India and their pairing here. Their third title of 2023 to go with the Indonesia Open and the Swiss Open. And since the end of their first game, you have to say, when they were trailing by so many and then had a late flourish in the losing cause, they have not looked back. They have been very, very good. They led from the start of... Pretty much since the start of game three, game two, the Gangnam Star comes out, and why not? And they've delighted the crowd with that celebration. And I think we're going to get some rackets into the stands here. For the Indonesians, that's two finals in a row here at the career open that they have fallen short. Just looked a shadow of themselves from what they normally can do, the world number one pair, but absolute delight. For these two, Chirag Shetty and Sapvik Saraj, Ranki Reddy. <laughs> a long way from Gangnam, which is farther up north in Korea, but that doesn't matter. Real delight for them. So Sakrik Saraj, Ranki Reddy and Chirag Shetty, the third seeds from India, beat the top seeds from Indonesia, Fajr Alfen and Mohamed Rian Ardianto, 17-21, 21-13, 21-14. They've done it in 62 minutes. Well, we saw but just being thrown into the crowd there by Chirag Shetty. And those to the winner, the spoils, as it were. And now we've got the prize presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, now we will have our ceremony for men's doubles of 2023 Korea Open Badminton Championship, part of the 
HSBC BWF World Chiro Shetty, Indonesia will have to wait a little bit longer as Fajr Alfian and Mohamed Rian Ardi Ardianto. That's twice now in a row that they've lost. And, uh, and it's been a while since we've had Indonesian winners the men's doubles. You have to go back to an Indonesian pairing of uh, 2019, not too far. Fajal Alpin and Mohamed Dianto, as I said, former winners, but before them, before they won it, we have to go back to 2004, Luluk Hadianto and Albert Julianto winning this. We did have a, an American-Indonesian pairing in 2006, Chandra Vijaya and uh, Tony Gunawan, who's of Indonesian heritage, but played for the US back then winning this in 2006. So that brings us to an end here at the Korea Open. It started with the mixed doubles, Feng Yang Tse and Huang Dongping. A fantastic win for them. They won very comfortably indeed. 
in straight games against Jiang Tengpeng and Wei Yashin in the All-China Final. Then in the women's doubles, Chen Qingchen and Jia Yifan, the number one seeds. It looked like they were cruising it, but Kim and Kong, a fantastic comeback after recording their lowest ever points against Chen Jia, bounced back. But then in that third game, it was very one-sided indeed. And uh, very well done to them. All the seeded pairs of women's doubles are either from China, Korea, or Japan. And those countries have continued to dominate in this tournament. Uh, we said this was going to be the standout match of the day. It actually turned out to be the most one-sided and quickest of them all. Ansa Young has won back-to-back. -back. The first Korean to do that here at the Korean Open since the legendary Bang Soo-hyun in 1994. And the first to win back-to-back -back in the Korea Open since Camilla Martin back in 2001. Very straightforward win for her against Tai Tzu Ying, the 14th from Chinese Taipei. Anders Anderson and Lo Kenyu, the closest match of all, I think it's fair to say, in terms of that final game. Disappointment for Lo Kenyu, still waiting for a first title win in about a year and a half. Anders Anderson, he's had to wait even longer, two and a half years. His first title, he beats the 14th from Singapore in three. And we've just seen Saklik Saraj, Ranki Reddy there, along with Chirag Shetty beat Fajr Alfian and Mohamed Rian Ardianto as they win the men's doubles title. Let's tell you what is coming up next here on the calendar, a Super 750. In just a couple days from now, the Japan Open, and then following that, we've got the Australian Open. So lots to look forward to, and just oh, across the sea, Japan is up next. That's 7.50. Well, from all of us here, thank you so much for joining us. Misha Zad Huck and the rest of the team in Yosu. They've waited 21 long years and have been given a real treat. So it's goodbye from the Korea Open, this wonderful Super 500, and it's Hello Japan, the Super 750. That's in a few days. We'll see you then.